Hey friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and you are on my homestead here in Wyoming. And today is the day we have been collecting a ton of tomatoes. You can probably see over here behind me, we also got another huge garden haul. We got a lot of peppers, we got a pumpkin today, a ton of zucchini, some okra, you name it, we have been pulling it in from the garden and it is such a blessing. This time of the year, I traditionally spend a ton of time preserving everything up. I mean, look at all of these beautiful tomatoes we have. But today I wanna to focus our dinner and try to make a dinner that uses a ton of the resources that we already have. So because we have all these tomatoes, first thing that comes to mind for tonight's dinner is making a marinara sauce. So I wanna see how many uh, of our own ingredients we can get into one dinner. So Sam just recently got moose so I've defrosted some moose meat we're gonna use ground moose and we are gonna make one of the best marinara meatball type dinners that we have had I am so excited for this and then I'm just gonna bring you along and see what else we get into tonight I know we have a few other preservation projects to wrap up and we'll just kind of see where the night takes us so enough chit chatting let's get going on this yummy yummy marinara sauce okay we have our tomatoes here is our tray i'm gonna roast them so i'm just putting down some nice olive oil i'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 and then what we want to do for this is obviously we only want to preserve up the best spots so that had a bug spot on it but we're gonna take our tomatoes and squeeze them and then set them on our tray. And that will get rid of a lot of the seeds that we don't want. Um, I personally, at least, don't love a super seedy marinara sauce. And so by squeezing them, we can go ahead and get some of that those seeds out and we'll still get a really nice product. Now, I am also going to take the peels off, but I'm gonna wait until after we have gone ahead and baked them and whoo! Did you see that? And baking them will allow it to release the skins super, super easy. So I'm going to bake it. And then we can basically just pull all of the skins off. The Roma tomatoes are a little bit easier because, let me zoom you in. The Romas have kind of like a a membrane of the seeds and so you can literally just scoop them out so i just run my thumb along it and the seeds literally just scoop out aroma tomato is going to be a lot better for our marinara sauce so because they're a lot less um watery they're a lot more meaty so that is something to keep in mind if you have enough romas i would definitely recommend using aroma but obviously i don't have that many romas so I'm just gonna do my best here. And if the seeds are totally fine for you and you don't care, then just skip this step and it'll be super easy. All you'll do is just cut your tomatoes and lay them face down on an oiled pan. But like I said, we don't love a super seedy marinara sauce, so I'm gonna take the time to do this step. And the pigs and chickens love the seeds. So I'm gonna get these all seeded and then we'll move on to our next step. All right, we have our tomatoes cut. Now I'm just going to cut up this onion and disperse it. And this one has seen better days, but it's still just fine. We just have to take off a couple extra layers. And I'm gonna leave it pretty big because we will blend this. And then we're just gonna scatter those on the tray as well so that they roast with oops got a little skin there so that they roast with the tomatoes and get that nice roasty toasty flavor and then finally we have a head of garlic we're just going to chop the top off and then leave the skin on i'm going to grab some foil 
We're gonna lay down a piece of garlic in oil or in aluminum, put a little olive oil in it, and a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna wrap it up, and that's gonna basically steam it and make a little roasted garlic as well. But since garlic burns so quick, this helps kind of just steam it without burning. All right, into the oven, these are gonna go. So while our tomatoes are baking or roasting, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on our meatballs. So here I just have some parsley that I got out of the garden. I just got this knife and holy moly, is it sharp. It's a really, really good sharp knife. Okay. I'm dicing this up really, really small. That's just our parsley. So that's going to go in our meatballs. And then along with that, we need to chop up some red onion. I don't need the entire red onion. We're just going to do almost half of it. And I'm just gonna dice this up really, really small because it's going in a meatball. We don't want a huge bite of onion. I wanna tell you, you guys, having sharp knives makes cooking a million times easier. It's, I, and I think it makes it safer too because your food is like where you want it to be. It goes straight through. I can link this knife down below if you're interested, but maybe even just use this as a sign if you don't need new knives to go sharpen your knives because it really does make a huge difference. Every time I get a new knife or I sharpen my knives, I'm just blown away by it. Okay, and then we're gonna wanna put a little garlic in. So I like to just cut off the end, whoa! And then I lay my knife down flat and hit it and that helps break the peel off of the clove and makes it really, really easy to peel. So there's one clove. And there's our other clove. And for that, I'm just gonna use my garlic press. clean this up. That's all the chopping we need to do. I'm also going to add in one egg. That's from our chickens. Now we're going to throw our moose meat in. And this year we paid to get it processed. Um, when we, if we get any other animals, we will process them ourselves. But you guys, these moose are huge and I didn't want to burn out our equipment or Honestly, we had nowhere to store this much meat to keep it cold before processing it. So we took it into a processor this time, but if we get a smaller animal, we'll definitely take you along. Okay, that is some beautiful looking meat. I'm just going to go ahead and break it up a little bit and we're gonna mix it just roughly. And my hands are very clean, I can promise you that. I find when you're making a meatball or a meatloaf, there is no mixing tool like your hands. Okay, that looks great. So I have enough of the big ingredients. That's what I wanted to check was like the egg, the parsley, onions, that's looking good. So now let's get our seasoning in. So because I have that really yummy um, parsley and onion and garlic in here, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna do some homemade season salt. And some gluten-free breadcrumbs. This just kind of helps break it up a little bit. A tiny bit of oil to help hold it all together. And then I like a lot of pepper in ours, so I'm gonna add in some extra pepper. OK, 
Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna give that a good mix. And then I'm gonna form a fake meatball and just make sure it's gonna stick together. Perfect, that should be excellent. I think we're good to go. So let's get these all scooped out. Okay, and to reduce the amount of dishes I have to do after dinner, I am just going to lay them out on this cutting board that we were using earlier. So I'm just gonna use this scoop to get even sized meatballs, roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I like my meatballs smaller in size, but you can make them however you like them. And I'm just gonna go through and scoop all of these until we have them all. And the great part about meatballs is this is a really great freezer meal. You've, if you've been here for a while, you've seen me make them for a lot of freezer meals because you don't have to pan fry them. You can also bake them. Whoops. And you can make so many meatballs all at once. So that's super simple too. Um, I'm just gonna, well, I might bake them. Hmm. TBD, <laughs> I'll, I'll shape these and while I'm shaping these, I'll decide what I wanna do. I guess the oven's already on because I've got the tomatoes going. Hmm, options. All right, my tomatoes are looking good. This pan was a little small for how many I put on here, which I knew was gonna be the case, so we're just gonna have to be very careful. All right, here's our tomatoes and we should, yeah, see how easy we can just pull off the skins. That's exactly what we're gonna do and that's how we're gonna get the skins off. Okay, we're gonna finish making meatballs and I'm gonna let this cool down. Okay, friends, I decided we already have the oven going so we may as well just bake our meatballs. So I'm just gonna put them in here. You can put them really close together you just don't want them to touch. It's kind of like bacon. It can be really close when you cook it, but if it touches, it kind of sticks together. I was so confident this was gonna be big enough. Okay, mine might just stick together a little. Perfect, it's gonna be great. Okay, and I'm gonna stick these in the oven with the garlic. Okay, now I wanna get going on our marinara. So I'm just going to, like I said, peel off the skins. I've heated up my pan, clearly. So I'm just transferring our skinless tomatoes along with our onions over into this pan. And over here, we're gonna let this reduce down like considerably so that it's about the same thickness as a marinara you would expect to see. And while this comes up to temperature, we're gonna add a nice olive oil in. I'm gonna do about eh, two tablespoons. I'm gonna add in a decent amount of salt. Some pepper. I have two sprigs of basil from our garden. And then we're going to throw in one bay leaf along with our garlic. All I did was take this out of the foil and I'm just squeezing it with a towel since it's so hot, but the cloves pop right on out. All right, and finally we're gonna do about a tablespoon of tomato paste. I'm just gonna finish off this tube. And we're gonna let this come to a boil and reduce by half. So while our marinara is simmering down and our meatballs are in the oven, this is what I like to do to get the most out of my kitchen time. So I am just taking some of the garden harvest that I pulled out of the garden today and using this time to preserve it up. So I just have a large gallon freezer bag that I keep in the freezer and I add in okra throughout the year. 
That way, as the winter comes, I'm able to add this to things like gumbo and various soups. And this is the way that we really like to keep our okra preserved. It's quick and it's really, really simple for me to just pull it out and add it to anything. Next, I wanted to show you our two different varieties of okra. So on the right, that big one is, I think it's Hill Country okra, and it is a much larger okra. I do prefer the more traditional okra. I find it to be a little less woody, but we are really enjoying it, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. So now that this sauce has reduced, I'm just going to use my immersion blender and go ahead and mix that in. If you're gonna use it in your pot and it is not a stainless steel pot, just be very careful and make sure that you don't touch the immersion blender to the bottom of the pot, because that can scratch it. So here I'm just keeping it above the bottom and that way I don't have to transfer it out of another pan. So after this is immersion blended, I'm just going to add some salt um, into my boiling water along with a little bit of olive oil. Then I'm just gonna dump my pasta in, and we love this pasta. It's from Trader Joe's, it's so yummy. We're gonna give that a quick cook, and then as soon as that's ready, our dinner has come together very, very quickly and very easily. All that's left to do is just serve it up. So you can see here, I'm just adding in some of that cooked pasta. I add in about three meatballs into mine and a good amount of sauce since it is so, so yummy. And then I'm going to top it with cheese and a little bit of cayenne pepper from our garden last year. I like my spaghetti to just, or my pasta to just have a little bit of a kick to it. All right, we're gonna go give our pigs a little evening snack and I'm gonna give you a quick update on how big they are. Hi, boys. They broke the fence today, so that was fun. They knocked off this entire door while I was out working in the garden. It was really good timing that I was out here. It's really heavy. All right, these are our two Idaho pasture pigs. Here's me for reference, and I'm six feet tall, so I'm not a little lady, but they are getting really, really big. We have, they go in for slaughter on late November, so we have a little over two months still for them to keep growing, so fingers crossed we can get them pretty big, but they've been, they've been fun. It's crazy how much they can grow so quickly. We are gonna get the goats fed and check on the chickens before bed. I can see that their automatic doors water or automatic door is working and the predator lights are on, so they should be totally fine there. But thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider subscribing and I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye friends.